r slash ask reddit. What is something unrealistic that you often see in movies that annoys the hell out of you? Fight scenes with multiple attackers. They're all so polite. Waiting for their friends to get their ass kicked before engaging. In reality you get jumped by everyone at the same time. Jet Li actually talked about this in an interview once. Said it's called noodle time. Cause the guys waiting for their turn to fight the protagonist have time to eat noodles lol. I've got a plan. Great. What is it? No time. Just trust me. And then a 20 minute drive where it's still not discussed. Or a conversation starting in one room. And then scene is cut and it jumps to where they are in the car. Or wherever. Somewhere completely different but the conversation carries on right where it left off. What did they do in the time in between? Doctors doing everything in medical settings. Scanning the patient. Setting up IVs. Interpreting brain MRIs. Nurses who? Radiographers what? Literally watched a medical show last night where the surgeon was doing the patient's physical therapy session and evaluation. Um. Just no. Never. 10 trained soldiers with automatic weapons. A couple of snipers and a helicopter gunship are all shooting at the fleeing heroes. The only thing they manage to hit is the ground just behind their feet. How can you shoot women and children? Easy. You don't let them as much. Clean houses where there are 3 to 4 chaotic children. Living spaces in TV and movies are always spotless. That is. Unless there's a plot or character specific reason why it's not. And they are usually decorated very well no matter how poor they are. This is one of the things I liked about Malcolm in the Middle and the Middle. Messy houses. Going to Latin America. Quick. Put the yellow filter. And everywhere they go they just happen to arrive on the most aesthetically pleasing local holiday festival. It, going to Ireland. Quick. Time travel back to 1950. Someone being hit in the head, loses consciousness, and two minutes later getting up as if nothing happened. That, or people getting shot or stabbed in a limb and end up with horrific looking injuries. And yet that doesn't restrict their movement one bit. They can still run despite being shot in the leg. They can still fight even though they've been stabbed in the shoulder. They don't even feel any pain. I mean on one hand there is a great amount of stuff that is just lazy writing but on the other adrenaline will allow you to do some insane inhuman things. Big breakfasts that no one eats because the characters are in a hurry and running out the door. Me personally, I'll be late to whatever for some pancakes waffles. And orange juice in a pitcher not in a container from the store. So they grab a single piece of toast that they inevitably drop to signify a bad day. A. I have something important to tell you. It's about the Jones case. B. What's up? What did you find? A. Can't talk now. Meet me tomorrow at 9. B. A. Tell me what's going on. A. No. Not now. Tomorrow at 9. A is found murdered the next morning. B is haunted by conversation. Sets off on worldwide mission to solve the murder and uncover the cover up. It's amazing how many mystery shows do the dead meat solve the JFK assassination and global warming. I'm sure he'll be completely fine and not die seen from hot shots and then expect to be taken seriously. In fires nobody dies of smoke inhalation. They'll be in there for ages. Merrily chatting away. Coughing. Miraculous escape lifting a burning beam out the way maybe. They get outside and are fine. Maybe a smudge of soot on the face and a cough then on their merry way. Gunfire indoors or inside cars and everyone can hear fine afterwards. Big explosions that throw people around but have no shrapnel. Windows that can be jumped through without shredding your skin. People traversing through air ducts. When people order food in a restaurant and then leave before it arrives. At least get it to go. Even worse is they get it and leave with full plates still. My mom takes one bite and then leaves the house. Law student here. Every courtroom scene is a disaster. I object. Overruled. Every kid in a movie has to be a genius for some reason. They can just be a normal 10 year old. They also always own a Rubik's Cube. And if not that, they're so poorly written that they act like a child years younger than what the story claims they are. Action movies where the good guy's car gets rammed or gets in bad wreck and it's still drivable and the airbag doesn't deploy. As much as I love the Bourne movies, that shit always drives me crazy. 
In labor and birth scenes, the woman is pissed off, the baby is clean, and they never delivery the placenta. The newborns often look like they're already a couple of months old. It's because by law they are. Women in fight scenes with their hair down. Girl, tied back I know you can't see shit. In a similar vein, running in heels, if your job involves chasing villains wear flats. Snapping people's necks with a quick twisting motion at the jaw. Got, this is the one. I do combat sports, we twist each other up a lot. If it was so easy to snap a neck, our classes would be littered with corpses. I think Hollywood only has two sound effects for mechanics shops. Air impact guns buzzing like a NASCAR pit stop and some hand ratchets clicking. In Hollywood you could get a scene of someone working on the International Space Station and the background noise would be a NASCAR pit stop air gun. That air gun buzzes literally every tool ever apparently. Women in sex scenes always wearing matching bra and panties, and keeping the bra on the whole sesh. Stop waving that empty cup around, it's supposed to have hot coffee it in, put some water in it, or if you are worried about spills, fill it halfway with Elmer's glue, it needs to have some weight, especially when you set it down. Punching 4 people in the face and not feeling anything, I've been in a fight and won. Even then it hurts like hell, no one wins in a fight, they just get injured the least. Post apocalyptic women with clean shaven underarms. Same goes with perfect eyebrows and teeth maintenance. Falling into ice water in winter, getting out soaking wet, not dying of hypothermia. People can talk and hear each other in clubs or loud bars without any issues. Couples having romantic baths together. What's more relaxing than stuffing two full-sized adults in a tiny tub? And no matter how poor the characters are, they have a hundred lit candles in their bathroom when they take a bath. Candles are expensive. Jumping into a cab and yelling, follow that car, and the cabbie just readily complies. Surviving explosions with nary a scratch. Adding on to that, concussive force can destroy internal organs and bone. Being close enough to be thrown by a large explosion or burned by it probably means it did some serious damage. When people walk in the front door of a house or apartment and don't close it behind them, gets me irrationally pissed off every time. The way people break bottles on people's heads. Yep, as someone who tried I can say, it does not break. Gun silencers. There's no such thing. It's a muffler at best but you can't mute the sound out. The protagonist always seems to give a reserved parking spot everywhere. Manhattan is just like the suburbs when it comes to parking spots. Unless it's an extremely flammable place such as a fireworks factory, the vast majority of fire sprinkler systems aren't deluge. Or the ones where they have a good fight inside while sprinklers go off and they aren't blasting puke from being sprayed with the shit that comes out of the regular types. But nobody gets sprayed with 10 year old stagnant water and would want to continue before they step outside. Hanging up without saying goodbye or anything. Knitting. Actors hardly ever correctly knit. They just bang the needles together and throw string around. Non berliners renting a huge apartment in a big city such as New York or San Francisco. People who go through glass and emerge without a scratch or cut on them. Half of all movies would be like 10 minutes long if people actually talk to each other. Rolling off each other and going to sleep immediately after sex. No waddle to the toilet. No cleanup. Just post curdle. Blissful sleep. Full breakfasts are left on the table on a regular Monday WTF has the time and money to cook and then choose not to eat more than a bite. Women waking up in bed with a full face of makeup, I'm talking winged eyeliner and fuchsia lipstick. I seriously want to know who makes those decisions in the makeup department SMH. Breaking a glass window and not bleeding at all. Real life battles are usually so loud that you can't hear other people talking to you. In medieval warfare. Armies fought in formations. None of this breaking up into one-on-one -on -one duels crap. Why does there always have to be a romance side plot? Being outnumbered 10-1 and not just winning, but decisively winning. Is everyone Swedish or something? Everything that happens in rom-coms. Bad guys win one battle. They've won the battle. But we will win the war. Good guys win one battle. We have just won the entire ducking war. Bad guys kill leader. I think. 
main protagonist, should be the new leader. Good guys kill leader. We won the entire ducking war. 40 shots from a 6 shooter without reloading. People eating pizza, no matter if it's a family with 2 kids or 5 roommates having dinner, there's one pizza on the table almost every time. Each person grabs a slice. They start talking and on the next scene the eating is all done and everyone goes on with their day. You can't fool my fat ass. Nobody eats a slice of pizza and leaves the table happy and full. Where is the rest of the meal? Large teams of highly trained soldiers can't take down one guy because they don't stay in cover and don't coordinate their attacks. How everyone's password is a single word directly tied to something on their desk. No numbers or special characters either. Lots of shooting, no ear protection, and uninterrupted conversations throughout. Whoa, you made it to the end? You're a ducking beast. I'll cut you a deal. Smash like and subscribe for more curated content bruh. It's free and that's a great price.